you. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, whichever one you are currently experiencing at this point in time. Today we're looking at a couple of drills because that's what you're mainly going to be needing in any kind of tool bag or tool project that you're going to be doing. You're going to need to make some holes so that you can fasten things to other things. That's what a building is. It's a thing that's fastened by other things. And the brushless tools are taken over the market because they're more energy efficient, they're more uh, powerful in terms of what they can do, but not by much. When you look at about 16% increases in performance, it's good, but sometimes it doesn't really outweigh the price. So sometimes sales go on for Milwaukee, DeWalt, Ryobi, Rigid, Makita, etc. And when you walk into a hardware store like Home Depot, Lowe's, Harbor Freight, if you live in the Midwest and know what a Menards is, um, also there, Ace Hardware, and so on and so forth. And that's not counting online stores like uh, Acme or Amazon. And you're going to find yourself so overwhelmed that eventually you just get tired and you call up a contractor and say, yeah, you take care of it for me. That's money that you're spending that you don't need to be spending and experience that you could be getting that you're just outsourcing to somebody else. They already have 10, 20, 30 years of experience. You need that, not them. So you can do it yourself. But which one do you pick? There's a bunch of different colors. Do you just go for your favorite color? Do you just go for one because you already have the batteries for it? The answer is no, not for favorite color, and also no for just having batteries. First up, we got the DeWalt set, which comes with the 20 volt driver, the impact driver, two 20 volt batteries. They're 1.3 amp hours. It comes with the DCB 107 charger. Uh, which also charges 12 volt as well as the 20 volt batteries and you get a small contractor bag that is uh, comes with two handles and tiny pocket yeah yeah but we don't really care about the bag do we i guess we can it there point being this is what we actually care about for the drill we have the dcd 771 and for the impact driver we have the dcf 885 comes with a half inch chuck in gear one which you see there it's already in it goes from 0 to 450 rpms while in gear two with that switch number two goes into 0 to 1800 now again I'm gonna say it because here it says 1800 if you look at Home Depot's website it says 1500 so always go with what the tool says and the manufacturer says not necessarily what the vendor says so just a heads up now because DeWalt are six sadistic bastards who want to use unit watts out instead of inch pounds or Newton meters like all the other companies again we're gonna have to do some quick math and I'm gonna try to explain this as quickly as possible because I know once people see numbers and expressions the first thing they want to do is start running away clicking away and then finding some kind of TikTok. but really quick all you have to do to find unit watts out if you don't know the inch pounds in torque, all you'd have to do is take 450, let's try to make that as clear as possible, 450 times T over 560 is equal to 300. So the 300 is the unit watts out that is being advertised by DeWalt. The T is the torque that we're trying to find. 560 is the constant. That's just what everybody uses for the sake of the formula. And 450 is the max RPM for that particular mode. So if we bring this down, we have 450 times T, which gives you 450T over 560, which is equal to 300. Now, the way this website does, it just factors everything out. You're going to take the top numbers, the bottom numbers, and then... Uh, cross out any like terms so the two and the two cross the five and the five cross and then you're left with the terms that need to be multiplied down here so three times three gives you nine right and then uh, times five gives you 45 again sorry if I'm a little slow with the math but I'm trying to make sure that everything's in focus so I'm looking through the camera three times three is nine times five is 45 so you get 45 T 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 gives you 56, so you get 45T over 56, 
which is equal to 300. Then it factored it out for whatever reason, but again, you can just leave it as 56. So 45T over 56 is equal to 300. Again, two, uh, two cubed or two times two, which is eight times two gives you, sorry, two times two is four times two, which is eight times seven, which gives you 56, same thing. 45T t is equal to 56 times 300. Multiply that, you get 16,800. Divide both sides by 45. I don't know why this website, again, broke it down like that, but at the bottom, you'll see 1,120 divided by three, which will give you the same thing as if you just multi uh, divided 45 from 16,800, and you'll get 373.33333, just repeating. And again, that's what we got for inch pounds. Sorry, that took a little bit. I appreciate you hanging in there, but unfortunately, um, or rather fortunately for us, the impact actually gets an inch pound rating, whereas for whatever reason, DeWalt, sick as they may be, decided to go with unit watts out and leave it for us to interpret. So essentially unit watts out is for people who want to convert uh, energy or find energy by using speed and their unit watts and then based off of speed you measure torque so based off of the rpms and what's advertised you'll find the right speed it essentially calculates the speed at its highest point it's it's a strange unit to use i wish they would just use unit meters or foot pounds or inch pounds um but again uh thanks to walt so sorry hold on hey wake back up everybody right the numbers are gone relax all right, so that's that. Again, all these will be uh, in a few. I will definitely be drilling some stuff, so don't fall asleep. Next, we have the impact driver. Now for the impact driver, we've got the DCF-885. For those of you who don't know, I love that three light design. I wish all manufacturers would add that to their drills and impact drivers. I don't know why they just keep the single lights on some of the older ones, but it's starting to become more mainstream. Love that. But yes, we've got the impact 20 volt max. It is rated for 3,200 impacts per minute. And unlike its brother over there, it actually gets a foot pound rating of 117 foot pounds. Now, all you would need to do to convert that to inch pounds, since there are 12 inches in a foot, all you would have to do is just multiply 117 times 12 you get your inch pounds and then you could always divide it back by 12 and get your foot pounds which is more than enough for what you're going to need around the house but in case you wanted to know it is 117 times 12 gives you 1404 or 1404 however you want to say it that's what you got for those of you who live outside of the united states or anybody who doesn't use pounds and ounces for your measurements of mass this is 1.545 kilograms, otherwise three pounds and 6.5 ounces. As for the impact, we have two pounds, 11.4 ounces, and those of you who don't use those units, it is 1.23 kilos. Now, for those of you who may be wondering why I'm actually measuring them with the batteries in them, this is what they come with, and this is what you're gonna be holding, so there's no need to waste your time telling you how much they weigh without a battery. You need to know how heavy they are before you pick them up, right? Some people like lighter stuff, some people like heftier things so it feels more premium. Now two things. The temperature of the room is currently about 70 degrees and also I don't have a proper uh, thermal scope to be able to see the internal components. But once I'm running these things for a little while, they will heat up to the point where I can actually use this. I picked this thermometer up, it is an infrared thermometer. Really quick before the sawdust goes flying, I just wanted to grab the RPMs for both the drill and the impact, as well as kind of show you what I'm gonna be using to actually drive. Now I am gonna be using lag bolts because it is a rather thick piece of wood, but I will be using a Quinn digital torque adapter with a socket to hex chank adapter to a half inch to three eighth to a three eighth to quarter inch to seven sixteenth socket. 
I understand the first thing the internet's gonna see when they see this thing is, this is an inaccurate measurement. Well, I'm sorry, listen, this is the only thing I had and I don't have any 7 sixteenths sockets in half inch drive. Sue me, all right? I'm not giving you misinformation. I'm letting you know the numbers might be a little bit off, but they give you a rough understanding that this is, even with adapters, what it can roughly push, okay? I'm also even gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and try a bigger four amp hour battery just to see if the weight of the sockets affects it, which some people say that a heavier socket will give you a little more push. Um, so calm down, relax. As for the impact driver, it'll probably do well just as well. I'm more afraid of the impact driver snapping something in here. Now, the adapters are impact rated except for the socket. I'm not sure how the digital torque adapter may fare. So if it breaks, then this is kind of the end of the video. Otherwise, stay right there. Quick side note. The kit batteries don't come with a battery indicator, so there's no way of like proving to you that these are fully charged. So you're gonna be like, oh, you probably killed these to make the other ones look better. No, there, there, there's no horse in the race for me. I don't get paid by any of these companies. This is all you know, out of my pocket, so relax. But yes, there are no, no way of knowing if the battery's charged other than going and sticking it onto a charger and seeing the battery indicator on there. I ain't doing that, sorry, but yes. On to the RPM test. We're gonna light our, or line our reflective tachometer tape to the edge of the chuck. Since there's no reflective surface here, the, REM, the RPMs would not be red. So we need something shiny so that the sensor inside can reflect and count the RPMs. Here we go. Okay. So we have about 417 to 418 RPMs. That's on gear one. On um, these are rated for 450 RPM, so it's you know 30, 40 short, depending on how it's feeling. Now, for the sake of science, we're gonna be popping off the 1.3. Again, I can actually show you. This one is fully charged. We are in gear one. This one goes in. And let's grab that measurement. Line up that tape. Sensor on. Get my finger out the way. And we have about 470. 472, 473 is the highest or the peak, but about 470. So this thing does just over what it's recommended to do or not recommended, but advertised to do, at four amp hour batteries. So if you are gonna get this, try to pick up a four amp hour battery at least, just so you can get at or above what it's rated for in terms of RPM. Keeping that in mind, you are not getting uh, 450 RPM while it's under load. This is just free spinning with no load. There's going to be a driver bit, you're gonna be driving something, there's gonna be a drill bit in here. You know, keep that in mind. Under load is gonna give you different numbers, but as far as advertised, use a bigger battery. Now the impacts are tougher to gauge for two reasons. One, because of this knurling around the tip, it's actually pretty tough to get tape to stick to it because there's a lot of little spaces where the adhesive can't really touch it. Go ahead and focus you, sorry. Um, that and also, this thing is rated for 2,800 RPM. So even though the machine can keep up, I'm not so sure that the tape will be able to. Um, here we go. This thing is rated for 2,800. Can it do it with the 1.3? And then I'm gonna also try with the four amp hour just to make sure. Let's go. RPM seems to be going down. Is it a bad battery? Don't tell me it's a bad battery. Let's try this one. 
all fair. Twenty six thirty one. Okay, so that was at the peak. Gave it a few seconds. Now, really quick, let's look at the temperatures. Okay, so this thing is so cool that it's not even registering. Okay, right there, it registered 90.5. 90.5 on the internals. And again, this is after a few seconds under no load. Now the drill is 96.6. And again, this is like a heat vent that's given 96.6 as well. So they're relatively cool under no load. So that's good to hear. Now, just for the sake, let's go ahead and see how many RPMs when we give it a four amp hour battery. And again, this thing is fully charged. All right. Working with limited space here. Make, make a little elbow room. Grab that, let that tape come around. It's already coming. It's trying to fly away. All right, it's 2800. Oh yeah, 2932. So definitely pick up a bitter, bitter? Yes, do not pick up any bitters. Um, they are not good people to be around. Definitely pick up a bigger battery if you're gonna be picking up this particular kit. Um, the 1.3s, I mean, they, they will work, but again, as you can see, for them to actually get the performance that is advertised, they're going to need that much more power. And so, with our three inch lag, this is about 7 16 Technically, you could use an 11 millimeter with it, but it seems to be a little more snug with a 7 16 We have our contraption hooked up to our digital torque adapter. That's going to be measuring the max torque. So let's see what happens. I'm also going to slap on a washer, so just in case it goes too hard, it doesn't bury the screw. I gave it a couple of turns into the wood just to make sure we get an accurate gauge. So it goes on. Again, there's no way of letting you know how much battery is in it, but it is in scene one. Scene one, not scene one, setting one. And let's see what happens. Well, the lumber smacked into the camera, but let's see what the adapter says. Right there it stopped. I wanna see what that measurement says. If we go to memory, P1 is the latest. It's gonna show 25.7 foot-pounds. And if we multiply that by 12, so 25.7 is about 300 foot-pounds. I'm gonna hold this side of the wood because I don't have a vise, but I'm going to let it run again with the finger all the way down. Not really pressing, but let's see what we get. Wow, I almost broke my wrist there. And let's see what we got. But at the bottom, at the very bottom of the screen, right in the middle, it says inch pounds. Yeah, apologies if you can't see it. For the sake of science, we are back going in through the harder side of the wood. I have a fresh lag bolt, just so there's no tricks, no gimmicks. Same adapter, same drill, same first setting, same battery. Let's go. All right, that measured So the max on that was 358. I don't know if, try to capture that. 
358. So not quite the uh, 373 that it was rated for, but again, with the 1.3, that's not bad. Um, there's no reason to even put a four in there. I know the four is gonna take it over the edge, but even the screw or the bolt is not that hot to the touch, which is also impressive. So as far as its rating for strength, I'm going to give this thing like a, like a B plus A minus. That's not bad. All right, on to the impact. Now, before I do that, keep in mind, the impact drivers are made for this stuff. If you're doing lags into wood that are that long, just use an impact or you have to dr drill a pilot hole to make it easier so nothing splits, but it depends on how hard the wood is, depending on what you're trying to fasten. Um, you don't wanna just take an impact, throw it through some wood and end up splitting it. So, you know, use your mind and use your best judgment. Now this is gonna be super loud, so I may just mute, but I don't even think there's a point in doing this particular one because the impact is gonna get it through. Right now, once it's in, that's when the impacts actually start. So just going forward, I'm just going to press forward to see how quickly it does it. But ultimately, when you're using a large lag like this, impacts is usually what you're, what you're going to use unless you got a hammer drill. That thing did an alligator roll. That's terrifying. But yes, that thing was so beefy that <laughs> I think it broke my, yeah, I think it broke my digital torque adapter. No, it's still alive. Now the final thing is just to check the internal temperatures. So for the drill driver, I'll do that one in a second. For the impact, it's still at a cool 96.4. The drill is at 97.5. Pretty impressed. Um, again, when you're doing one or two lag bolts, these things are not gonna be crazy. Now, if you have to do a thousand screws or a thousand bolts or you know whatever you're using these for, um, that's when you're gonna see the actual wear and tear. So that being said, this is the DeWalt kit. Now, all in all, if you happen to be interested in this kit with the drill driver, impact driver, bag, two batteries, and the charger, then you're looking at the DCK240C2. But before you go out and grab that, just know it is $220 as of making this video where the 20 volt atomic DeWalt is out and it is supposed to be better. You know why? Because one, it's brushless, so it uses less battery power. Two, the form factor on this is much larger than the Atomic series, as well as the performance. The Atomic brushless is supposed to be 16% more uh, powerful than the brushed counterpart, which is the 771 here. And the impact driver is supposed to be about 300 uh, yeah, 1,700, so about 300 inch-pounds stronger than this, which is about 25 foot-pounds stronger. Again, that might not be that much of a big deal. And for 16% increase, you're looking at 373 times 16%. You're looking at about maybe 60 inch-pounds more, right? That might not be a crazy deal-breaker. If you happen to find this set in a discount or on sale somewhere, then definitely grab it over that one. Otherwise, the Atomic Kit is only $10 more for brushless, plus you get two two amp hour batteries. So the batteries are better, the tools are better. It also comes with a bag and a charger. If you happen to be looking for that, then look for the Atomic Series. Now, as far as my only complaint with this particular tool, I gotta say the only thing that kills me here is the form factor. If we look at the length of the head on this thing, just grab my digital caliper here. Hold on. 
right? We actually just measure this out from end to end. We're at just over eight inches. That's crazy. Like my digital caliper is, it doesn't even open that much. But that's not including the jaws being fully extended. That's with them being retracted. It's just over eight inches. If you're in a spot where you don't have very long drill bits, then this might be good because you can reach up in there and it gives you a little extra strength without having to buy uh, longer ones because obviously longer drill bits cost more. But if you're looking for something compact, this is not it. So for that reason, apart from you know other options out there, I would, I personally would not pick up this set. That's just me. If you like the set and you like what you saw in the video, fantastic. Otherwise, let me know. Would you get it? Would you not? And that's it for the DeWalt kit, combo, tool set, whatever you want to call it. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if there's something you bought instead. Judging it as a whole... I'm going to have to say it, it's not, not a good thing. The tool itself is okay. The thing has a bigger head than I do. But if we look at the price, not when there's a brushless alternative. That's one. Two, thing is too long. Three, the 1.3 amp hour batteries, they're barely holding a charge. They, they die kind of quickly. And so all in all, I'm going to have to compare more brush tools like yeah like i'm gonna have to do that because if this is what dewalt has on the market i can understand why people are confused so what i have here is the brush milwaukee and i also have the brushed ryobi these also come in kits very similar to the one you've just seen and so what i'm going to be doing is doing almost the same thing and I'm going to try to make like a small two or three video series this will be one um, comparing those two as well for the Milwaukee I don't have the impact driver so I'm just going to take it as on paper type of situations unfortunately but we'll see if the DeWalt actually came out on top or if these two are superior I think I'm going to call it brushed or bust I don't know. It sounds gimmicky. Sounds like a game show. But brush, brushed or bust. And does it compare to the brushless? In this particular case, as a kit, it's a good kit. It's expensive. Kind of weird. And without a 4 amp hour or higher battery, it's not really doing what's advertised. So I'm going to have to say on the DeWalt, it's a bust as a kit. As an individual tool, I checked the price. It's about $64. Um, you walk into a Harbor Freight you're going to pay about 60, 70 bucks for either a Bauer or a Hercules. So it's pretty well priced for what it is and for what it does. But as far as being on the market on paper, these things minimum should be pushing between five and 700 inch pounds. So it's, it's underpowered for the price you're charging DeWalt. For that reason, it's a bust. So that's my take on that. If you happen to own it or if you happen to pick it up, I will leave a link in the description. Maybe you could prove me wrong. Maybe I got a model that's um, not playing up to the DeWalt name. Either way, let me know. That's all for now. Remember, work smarter.